I've been working with ProRes RAW a lot lately and I've had a very hard time finding information on how to ingest, edit, as well as color grade ProRes RAW in a color managed way. And to top it off, I usually prefer to edit in DaVinci Resolve, which doesn't even support ProRes RAW. Well, today I'm gonna share with you guys what I've learned and how I work with ProRes RAW in Final Cut Pro and then get it over to DaVinci Resolve for color grading in a color managed timeline. Make sure you guys stick around because I'm also gonna show you guys how to do this working with multiple cameras in the same timeline, some raw and some not. Ready? Let's check it out. Here we are in Final Cut Pro and I have a timeline open of a recent real estate video I did. In this timeline, I have ProRes RAW clips shot with the Lumix S1 and the Ninja V, along with some regular V-Log clips recorded internally on the S1, as well as some D-Log clips from my DJI Mavic. Rather than export every clip as a standard ProRes clip and then taking it into DaVinci, I've done my edit here since Final Cut handles ProRes RAW and basic editing so well. Plus, doing it this way saves a lot of drive space because I'm only exporting exactly what I need rather than all the data. And we all know that ProRes RAW takes a ton of drive space. Now for the under the hood stuff. There are a few things that need to be done to make sure you are working in the proper color space. First, go to your library settings and make sure you have wide gamut HDR enabled. This is what's going to keep your dynamic range and color latitude intact. For your project settings, set it to Rec 709. Then, on each of your ProRes RAW clips, open up the Info tab, and in the drop-down here, change it to Settings. Now you should see all of your RAW controls. In your RAW controls, go to RAW, Log Conversion, and set it to your camera profile. In my case, it's Panasonic V-Log. Now, I don't know about other manufacturers, but Panasonic actually provides a LUT that maps the raw color gamut to V-Log V gamut. This is a very important step if you are using a V-Log camera to get you into the proper color space. Now, both the internal recordings and the raw recordings from the S1 are properly mapped to V-Log. If your camera manufacturer does not have a LUT to convert the raw gamut to log, leave this as none. The built-in LUT does not properly convert things and will put your export into a Rec. 709 color space instead of log, clipping off all the precious dynamic range and color information we work so hard to keep. For your non-raw clips, you don't need to make any changes here. Now, take an adjustment layer, and if you guys are unsure how to make an adjustment layer, let me know, and if enough people request it, I can make a video on how to do that. But take your adjustment layer, Place it on top of your clips that are from the same source, like these clips here. Open the effects panel, go to color, and then add the custom LUT effect to the adjustment layer. Then go to effects and select the Rec. 709 conversion LUT from your camera manufacturer. This will help you make the basic exposure and white balance adjustments to the raw clips using the raw controls prior to exporting them. Repeat this for all the rest of your clips. As you can see here, I already have a bunch of these adjustment layers set up just to save time, but it is very important to make sure that these are turned off before exporting for DaVinci. We don't wanna bake this in. This is just to help us make our basic color corrections. Once that's done, now it's time to export. Since RAW is 12-bit, you wanna export in ProRes 4444. This is a 12-bit space, and I'm just gonna choose XQ since it's less compressed, but you can do either if space is limited for you. Now let's head over to DaVinci Resolve where I'll show you how to get this properly color managed. I just wanna take a quick moment here and say if you guys have found this video helpful so far, please do me a big favor and hit that thumbs up as it definitely helps this channel out. And if you are not subscribed, please consider hitting that button down below as well as that bell for future notifications. All right, let's get back to the video. Okay, with DaVinci Resolve open in our project settings, we are going to leave everything as the default. And as a pro tip, leave your timeline setting at 1080p till you are ready to export as it will make everything flow so much smoother during the editing and grading process. But make sure you change it to your desired resolution before the final export and make sure you do it in the project settings, not in the deliver page. Now in the edit page, let's drop our clip into the timeline 
select the clip, go to Timeline and select Detect Scene Cuts. This will automatically cut all of our clips in the timeline. Sometimes this won't be perfect if you have transitions and things like that, but just take a quick look and make any adjustments as necessary. Once that's done, we are going to head over to the color page, and here's where we are going to get things color managed. First, select all the clips that are from the same source. All these clips are from the S1 and are in Vlog, so I'm going to right click and select Add into New Group and name the group Panasonic S1. In my case, I have clips from the Mavic as well, so I'm going to create a group for those and name it Mavic. Now here's the trick to color managing all your clips so they work the same way in the color tools and will be in the same color space. Now that you have grouped them all together, you have options on top of your node tree to select group pre-clip and group post-clip. Select group pre-clip. Create a new node and in the effects search bar, type ACES. Drag the transform onto the node and for input, select your profile for me, it's Panasonic V35 since the Vericam uses Vlog. And the output, select Asus CCT. Now select the Timeline node tree, create a new node, and drag the Asus transform onto the node. Now for the input, select Asus CCT and the output as Rec709. Now, as you see, everything has been converted for us. And for the Mavic clips, we're going to do the same, but since Asus doesn't offer DJI D-Log, we're going to use a standard transform color space and map everything over to Asus CCT. Now you can see everything has been correctly color mapped and transformed to Rec. 709. Now you do your corrections and grading on the clip level, just like you would any other grade. But this ensures that you are working in a properly mapped and properly color managed working space. This isn't the only way to get ProRes RAW into DaVinci Resolve. It's just the best way that I've found to do it so far. And I hope this video has helped you guys out if you are in the same quest. If you have any questions on the way that I do this at all, please hit me up down in the comment section below. If there's a better way that you know of, please help us all out and let us know down there as well. But until the next time, thanks for stopping by.